Hi everyone and welcome to your video on Pascal's Triangle. Pascal's Triangle is definitely going to be a topic you haven't covered before. It's the beginning of something called binomial distributions. Um, Blase Pascal was a French mathematician back in the 1600s and he developed this triangle and a lot of things that we see in life kind of pattern the numbers that um, show up in the triangle and they, we use them to solve any type of binomial situation. So for any of you guys moving on to statistics next year, you'll spend some time also doing binomial distributions and working with the, the types of things that we're going to learn over these next couple of days. Okay, the first thing I want us to do is to create um, Pascal's triangle and maybe watch for a little bit of how I'm doing this because we're going to expand it and I want you to make sure you have enough room on your paper for this. But what we do is we start up near the top with the number one. Maybe I should make sure you can see it. Okay. And then from there, at an angle, everything, all the outside edges of the triangle are going to be ones. Okay. And what you do when you're creating the row is you're going to put a one on the outside edge. But then any numbers in between you add by adding or you you create the numbers in between by adding the two numbers above it on a diagonal. So this one plus this one will get me a two. Okay. Then we add ones on the outside edge. And now we add these two numbers together. One and two will get me the three. And that'll be in between those. And two plus one is three. Okay, and we keep going with that pattern. One plus the three gets me four. Three plus three is six. And the three plus this one gets me four. Okay, so each number, the outside edge again is always a one. The inside numbers are formed by adding the two numbers above it on the angles. Okay, so keep going. You can find, if you Google Pascal's Triangle, pages of Pascal's here in these numbers as they expand. Um, I'm probably going to try to get out to, well, as far as I can get down here, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, 15, And the nice thing is it is symmetrical. So if you figure out some of the bigger numbers on the left side, they will also be the numbers on the right side. Let's see here, 36, 84, 126. And I think I'm going to go up to my 12th row. I'll try. Now I'll just go to 11. All right, so I'm going to keep going. So definitely pause the video right here and get your triangle finished. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Okay, one thing I do want you to notice, though, is when you think about your triangle, this up here, this first one, that is considered row zero. Okay. And this row right here is row one. And we have row two. So think about it too. The number 
matches that second number inside each time. So we have row three, row four, five, Okay, now a lot of people have studied and found all these really cool patterns that you find in here. Um, two of them that always stuck out with me from high school that I remembered is each row is a power of 11. So think about like in row zero, 11 to the zero power is one. 11 to the first power is 11. 11 to the second power is 121. 11 to the third power is 1,331. Um, another cool fact or property that happens with this is each row is um, a power, if you add it up, it's a power two. So like here, this is like two to the zero power. But if I add this up, I get two, which is two to the first. If I add these up, I get four, which is two squared. Here I get eight, which is two to the third. Here I'd have 16, which is two to the fourth. So you know that's gonna be 32 and 64. So there's a lot of interesting uh, properties that come with this triangle. Okay, now kind of put that thought to the side. We're gonna come back to that in a little bit. But I said uh, we're gonna be spending some time talking about binomial theorems and binomial distributions. And a binomial, remember, is anytime you are adding two terms, okay? So if I do a plus b to the zero power, we know that anything to the zero power is just one, right? a plus b to the first power is a plus b. What I want you to focus on is, um, well, maybe I'll come back to that. a plus b squared means you need to write a plus b twice and foil it. So if I do my first term, I'd have a squared. My outside gets me an ab, and my inside gets me an ab, so I have two ab's. And my last term gets me b squared. Okay, so taking something to the second power, not that big of a deal, okay? But now it gets a little bit hairier to take something to the third power. Means I have to write it three times. Well, I already know if I FOIL the first two, I get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. But now I have to go ahead and distribute this a to everything and then the b to all of it. So I will have a, a cubed. A here will get me a 2a squared b. That would get me another a b squared. Then I do the b. b times a squared. b times this middle term. And then finally last b cubed. So if I combine and write it in standard form, my first term will be an a cubed. Then I need all my a squared. So there's an a squared b, here's an a squared b. So if I have two here and one more, I have three a squared b's. Then I have a to the first b squared, and I have three of those. And then finally my b cubed. So expanding that took a little bit of time. Okay, so now if I asked you, go ahead and do this for the a to the fourth, okay? Well, I can imagine if we were in class, everybody would be complaining. There's no way we would wanna do this and now multiply this whole thing again by another a plus b. So the nice thing is Pascal's triangle actually does it for us and we don't even realize it. If we look here at my very first one, that's zero. That power on a binomial is going to be your row number. So if I look at row number zero up here on Pascal's triangle, 
I have one. Okay. All right, sorry, I gotta switch back and forth here. Now you might say for row one, you see a one and a one up there. You don't see an A and a B. What those numbers in Pascal's triangle is gonna do is help you find the coefficients. So I know it's one A and one B. You just have to get good at writing things in standard form. If we're gonna have, like let's say for an A to the third, Standard form says you're going to have an a third first. Then in descending order, I will have an a squared with 1b. And all of these have to add up to a power of 3. So there's 3 here, 3 more there. So I have two a's here. Now I need 1a, which means I must have two b's. And I don't have any a's, so I have three b's. This is standard form. And if you look at all the numbers in front, all these coefficients, that will match up with row 3 of Pascal's triangle. So I have a 1, 3, 3, 1. And if I go up to row 3, 1, 3, 3, 1. Okay, so let's do row 4 without um, expanding it by doing our multiplying. First thing I want you to think about is how to write it in standard form. If it's an a to the fourth, that means you're going to have some number of a to the fourth. Okay. Plus, I go in descending order, so my next one's going to be an a cubed. But all the powers of our terms must equal 4, so that means I have a b to the first power. Plus, I go down by, I decrease my power of a one more time, so a squared, which means I must have also two b's, so that I have a total of 4. Plus, decreasing a one more time, well, to have a total of 4, that means B must be 3. And then finally, I'm not going to have any A's, just all B's. So you go in descending order for the A's, 4, 3, 2, 1, none. And you go in ascending order for the B's, 0 B's, 1, 2, 3, 4. Last thing I have to do is go up and grab row 4. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And those are going to be your coefficients. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So it saves you the work of having to expand that. Okay, so pause the video and I want you to fill out a plus b to the fifth for me. Okay, so when I do that, I know I'm going to have some number of a to the fifths. And then a to the fourth, b to the first, a to the third, b to the second, so each one of your terms has to have a total of five powers on it. And you're going in descending order for the a's, five, four, three, two, one, none, and ascending order for the b's, none. One, two, three, four, five. So when you look at row five, we have one, five, ten, ten, five, one. And what should happen every time, one thing I want you to notice is when we talked about row zero here, how many terms did we end up with? Well, row zero is going to be have one term. So it's the row number. I guess to get the number of terms, you're going to take that power plus 1, or the row number plus 1 will equal the number of terms. Okay, so if we look at number 6, this 5, if we take 5 plus 1, we should have 6 terms here. And if we count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So let's try one that's a little bit more challenging. If you flip it over, let's look at example two on the back. X minus 5Y to the fifth. All right, well, it's not just A's and B's anymore, right? We have negatives. We have um, constants in here. So how I want you to do that is first pretend um, 
that, oh, how do I want to tell you this? First thing I want you to do is write the series without the coefficient, okay? And I guess I pretend that it's A plus Bs, right? So I might do this first and say, I'm going to think about this as A plus B to the fifth, okay? So let's expand it using A plus B to the fifth. So I have A to the fifth, A to the fourth, B to the first, A to the third, B to the second, Okay, so I first expand it using just A's and B's. And then I go to my triangle and I look at Pascal's for row five. And I fill in row five. Okay, so when I go to row five, I have one, five, ten, ten, five, one. Okay, all right. Now the next thing we have to do is get rid of our A's and B's, right? A is equal to X, so wherever I see an A, I'm gonna put in an X, and wherever I see a B, and that's a negative 5Y, because it's really like saying X plus a negative 5Y, right? So my B is a negative 5Y, and because you're raising it to powers, with that negative, I want you to put, put it in parentheses every time. All right, so I'm gonna have one, and now instead of A, I'm using X, so X to the fifth, plus five. And now instead of A, I replace it with an X to the fourth, and instead of B, I'd replace it with a negative five Y to the first, plus 10. Now instead of A, I'm going X to the third, and instead of B, negative five Y squared. Okay, so continue with that. Okay, now it's a matter of cleaning up. Remember, if it is row five, there will be six terms. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have to clean up those six spots. All right, so our first one to clean this up, one times x to the fifth, well, that's nice, just x to the fifth. This five, x to the fourth, anything to the first power is just itself. So if you need to, you grab your calculator, but otherwise, Going to the first power is just negative 5 times 5. So this will become a negative 25, x to the fourth, y to the first. And you don't have to put the first on the y if you don't want to. Okay, now you might want to grab your calculators because here, now I have to square this negative 5 squared. This one isn't too bad. If I do negative 5 squared, you better put that in your calculator um, in parentheses. Because if you type in negative 5 squared, you're going to get negative 25. And we know that negative 5 times negative 5 is a positive 25. Okay? So my positive 25 times 10 will get me 250 x cubed y squared. So all of your terms, if they still should have a power of um, 5 if you have two variables like that. Okay, let's keep going. Negative 5 cubed. Well, I know in my head that that's negative 125, but you may not know that. So if you go negative 5 to the third, and we still have to multiply it by that 10, I get negative 1,250. X squared, Y to the third. Okay. Then my next term, negative five to the fourth times five gets me a positive three, one, two, five, 
x to the first, y to the fourth, and then finally negative 5 to the fifth is negative 3125y to the fifth. Okay, now if you did this correctly, on uh, binomials where there's a minus sign, it should oscillate between positive and negative. So positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And that would be the expanded binomial. Okay, one more together, number three. Notice here, we have a, a three in here. We don't even have a second variable. So again, you can either jump right into this step, but for the majority of us, I would prefer that we are doing this. I want you to treat it as an a plus b to the fourth. And first expand that, okay? So I have some number a to the fourth, e to the third, b to the first, a squared, b squared. And always double check, that is row four, and there will be five terms in it. And I have one, two, three, four, five. Good. So then I go to Pascal's triangle, and I look at row four, and I grab those numbers. One, four, six, four, one. All right, and then finally, I think my A is R, and my B is three. So as I do my substitution, I have one r to the fourth plus four, replacing that a with an r, r to the third times a three to the first if you want, plus six r squared, three squared, four times r to the first, three to the third, and then three to the fourth. Okay, and last thing I have to do is clean that up. So one times r to the fourth is just r to the fourth. Three times four will get me 12 r cubed. And if you need to, I would suggest underlining your five terms so that you can keep the five terms straight. Three squared is nine, nine times six is 54. Three cubed is 27, 27 times four is 81. Nope, actually three cubed is 27, 27 times four will be 108, I think. Yep, sorry about that. And then last three to the fourth, that's my 81. So we have just expanded the binomial. All right, so for your homework tonight, what you're going to do is try three of those. Um, so again, first show it as an a plus b, plug in Pascal's numbers, and then do your substitutions and clean it up. All right, good luck with that tonight.